Hi Aquarius, it's me Stormy and here is your monthly horoscope for May. What month is it? It's May of 2020. And I tell you what, Aquarius, this month has such a fun vibe to it for you. Your fifth house becomes a house of power this month. So really the question of pleasure, of joy, of taking a risk to do something a little bit different is abundant and on your table. And I absolutely love that for you. Now, this is also a month where we've got 40% of our planets in retrograde energy. So you will feel that there's a bit of a slowdown. And you've also got a moon starting out the month in the tip top of your chart. So lighting up some career energy. But I ultimately feel like this is a month where you don't have to focus so much on the career piece because there's energies coming around to support you, especially if you write, if you um, are in marketing, if you sell things in any way, you have a lot of support there. You can really tap back into the family and tap back into pleasure and joy in some of the social realms around you. And that's really what makes up the month. So let's jump in here and let's talk about everything that's going on this month. First of all, at the beginning of the month, on the 7th, we're going to have a full moon happening in the energy of Scorpio. So again, this aligns tip top of your chart right there in the career sector or the soul level calling. So if you're listening and you're like, Stormy, I'm retired, I'm unemployed, I don't even do work, I'm allergic, whatever the situation is. The 10th house is not just of the career, <clears throat> but career here can also be considered in what you're doing, what you're known for in the world. Um what you're doing to give something to the world. So this, this can be charity. It can be marriage. It can be, are you a stay-at-home parent? What is your claim to fame out in the world is how you want to translate this, okay? Now, the 10th house, being all of that, having a full moon in it, says the full moon says we need to end something, we need to acknowledge something, or we need to make an adjustment. So career shift is on the agenda, but I don't feel like it's in a way that needs to be scary or worrisome at all. What it is going to ask you, though, is to look at it like a Scorpio, which is what do, you, what do you really deeply desire in the area of your chart where we can see you the most fully, where you're doing something, you have purpose, you are moving like fire, right? Like what is that particular thing for you? What are your deepest desires in this area? And then what are you struggling with that is stopping you from having what you desire in this area. This full moon in Scorpio is going to help illuminate this for you so that you can make the adjustments that you need to over this next four weeks, over this next year, to bring this area of your life to something you feel like is really fulfilling, okay? I'm also getting a vision here too. Some of you may be new at a job or... You started a job maybe before the quarantine or something like that. So as you guys are getting back into it, you still have that I'm very new feeling and that's okay. Create the space, create the workplace that you want because Scorpio just wants to know what you want, what you desire so that he can bring you what you want, okay? On the 11th, it's a busy day. We're going to see Mercury move into the energy of Gemini and we're also going to see Saturn be, begin its retrograde and it is beginning in your sign first. Now we're just like one degree slash two degrees into your sign, but still the retrograde beginning in your sign is important for you to take note of. Let's talk about Mercury and Gemini first of all. Mercury and Gemini, he's happy. He's good. He's in domicile. He is over there. The world is right. He is lighting up your fifth house space. You are speaking joy. You are speaking fun. You are speaking to those children because in the fifth house, we have a lot going on with children, right? This could even be as we're here in June, you're like, thank goodness there's no more online schooling, right? <laughs> like I don't have to go back to fifth grade math. You could be thinking things like that, but it's a very joyful, joyful energy and it brings a lot of communication here. So truly, if it's a project, if it's a romance, if it's something you're thinking about taking a risk on, maybe you want to begin something new. Maybe you want to work for yourself. This could be an energy where you see the conversation at the beginning and it's really a joyful kind of thing to be talking about. Now, Saturn's retrograde is going to begin at one degrees of Aquarius, so your sign, and then it's going to back all the way up until 25 degrees of Capricorn when we end it coming in September. So this is a time where, first of all, the retrograde of you has immediately given you this indicator, right? Saturn came into your sign and you were like, whoa, am I prepared for the future 
what's happening like it's literally raising you raising your vibration so where you've been off kilter saturn is coming and shining a light and saying i'll be back to correct that so you've likely already started to experience that and it's not always about being off kilter because it's bad it's about where do you need to go to the next level okay now as saturn retrogrades and gets back into capricorn this is going to be that 12th house space that you're cleaning up and saturn is going to ask you to review reevaluate, re reconnect reconsider reunite with some things from the past this is a month because there's so much involved in the joy zone what we can do is try and go back to the past and we're like trying to get something from it except for information we're trying to relive those feelings re re have something from the past and Saturn's like did you build a solid enough foundation here did you clean out the things from the past have you made peace have you done the best with what you can in the things that are hidden so you have a solid foundation to stand on as I go forward so this is nothing new as Saturn works his way through this retrograde of Capricorn, you've been working on this stuff. Where are the weird self-defeating behaviors that you spent the last two years learning to get out of your own way and make peace with and shut off? Your spiritual practice, is it solid enough for you to stand on as Saturn comes into your sign at the end of this year for you to grow, right? So all of these things are going to just be asking you to be serious and to look at if this level of learning has been crystallized for you. On the 13th, also a busy day, Mars is moving into the energy of Pisces, and we've also got Venus stepping into her retrograde. Now, Pisces is the energy just next door to you. So we see Mars moving into your second house. This is your house of money, property, self-worth, um, the way that you make money. Now, I like Mars in the second house in general because... It makes you more courageous to, to do things with finances, to invest your finances, to Pisces is the 12th house energy naturally. So maybe clean out your values or possessions, right? If you've got things that you don't need, they're just kind of sitting around. Mars will help you sort these things out. Now, the other thing though, Mars in Pisces cannot be paying attention fully to something that's going on. So if quick money schemes come up or somebody's like, oh, I've just got this plan, you make sure you get absolutely all the details before you give them a dime. I don't even care if it is, you know, a new channel on Amazon Prime and you're like, oh, they have all these movies. I like you read the fine print because you can also be walked into a situation where it's easy to take advantage of you financially. So make sure you have all of the details if you're going to spend your money here, okay? This Venus retrograde is going to begin at 21 degrees of Gemini and it's going to retrograde all the way back to five degrees of Gemini so again the fifth house is lit up as Venus is retrograde she's going to ask you to review value what is the value here she's going to ask you to review affection money relationships harmony where do you have or you don't have harmony in your life right so venus here in the fifth house i think first of all i really see it coming back to the question of children or something that is childlike right it's in the beginning of the beginning stages of something it's very easy it's very joyful so venus here may be asking you you know are you taking solid responsibility in this area of your life do you need to take some different responsibilities or relinquish some responsibilities with things that have to do with children are you babying a project and you're pouring way too much money in it for what it's actually delivering to you or are you not feeling comfortable have you not felt comfortable well mars is in pisces now you're willing to take a little bit of a risk is this the place that venus is showing you like yeah it's fine let's go ahead and invest in that vacation uh you know should we be allowed to leave our houses um should you invest in that project or whatever it is the other thing i think of in this fifth house place is that venus here is saying you know, Aquarius, what do you want in a romance, right? Are you ready to just have fun? You just want to date? You don't, you don't want to have to be all serious? You know, if that's where you're at in your romantic and your passion life, I think that Venus retrograde helps you have some peace with that too, because sometimes we can be pushed around by the social pressures to commit, to commit, to commit. And if that's not where you're at, you just want to, even in, in, in a committed relationship, if you'd like to just be easy for a time, you know, just breathe, have fun with your partner, not have everything have to be so heavy. Venus is going to give you the opportunity to re-look at this area for sure and make sure that it has the value and the balance that you need. Now on the 14th, Jupiter is going to go into retrograde in the energy of Capricorn. He'll begin his retrograde at 27 degrees of Capricorn and end it at 18 degrees of Capricorn. Because this is lighting up your 12th house space, what Jupiter retrograde asks us to do is to get really truly honest about our strengths and our weaknesses in this particular house. So the 12th house is hidden things. 
it's um, research, it's information, it's your spiritual life, it's patterns of self-defeating behaviors and beliefs that you've had. It's also an area of creativity, specialized populations, your spiritual awakening and practices. All of that kind of lives smushed into that 12th house space. So Jupiter is saying here, what are your strengths and your weaknesses in this area? Because ultimately the wisdom of Jupiter in retrograde is to say, I don't know everything. I still need help. I am not as strong in this area. And so what can I do to bring this area of my life up? What can I do to firm up my practice here? Because the wisdom comes from the experience of actually asking for help and needing to adjust the practice. Because tends to be what happens is we present this area in an overconfident way. But Jupiter's like, no, nah, I don't think so. Not quite. Let's continue learning. So take the opportunity here um, in that 12th house space to say, where do I need a little help? Where do I need support and a little bit of learning, right? On the 20th, we're going to welcome the sun into the energy of Gemini. And then on the 22nd, we welcome in a new moon into the energy of Gemini. All of these light up your fifth house space. When the sun and the moon are together, absolutely anything is possible. So this is why you plant those seeds of intention to begin something new here. Begin something beautiful. Maybe you just need to relax. Maybe you need to play Maybe you do need to have something that's very pleasurable to you, right? Is sitting down and studying or reading that book, they're very Gemini qualities, or being social, being social maybe with your children or your family members or people that you love that seem to have this very like, I love you vibe or, or you bring me joy vibe around them. Maybe that's what you're looking to begin here. Now, this could be if you are looking to start a new project or to begin something. And I also think too, if you are looking to... um get pregnant, do an adoption, fostering, any of those kinds of things would fall into this energy as well. This is a wonderful time to plant those seeds of intention for things to start getting moving over this next four weeks. Now, as we close out this month, Mercury is going to be in the energy of Cancer. This lights up your sixth house space. So as we travel into June, the sixth house will become stronger and have more of a focus. But as we're leaving this month and Mercury moves here, it tells me that emotionally, you really want to make sure, Aquarius, that you drop back down into the body and you drop into that emotional body and you deal with and you speak and you share your feelings, right? In your day-to-day -day routines, do you feel like this is, is good? Because Mercury wants to make some decisions and he wants to make decisions that make you feel emotionally secure. secure. <laughs> I can't. Emotional, emotionally secure decisions that have some impact to them, right? Like maybe you're feeling emotional about your health or you're really connecting at a deep level to the nurturing and the wellness of your health. So you're making decisions to support that as well. Maybe you went on this delicious and fabulous little vacation, even if it was just in your house. Sometimes unplugging all of the electronics in your house can be a delicious vacation, but maybe it's made you reconnect to your daily routine, to your health and wellness, to your mental wellness. Maybe it's put a sense of compassion and service into you so you're actually helping or serving other people. Whatever it is, Mercury's making some decisions here, but there is definitely an emotional and a, an emotionally secure component to it that will definitely be driving you. Oh, getting this too. This is the time because Mercury moves into a position that's called out of bounds on the 17th, which means that you're not going to move in your traditional circles in order to find solutions, to find answers. Venus is out of bounds as well. So we got to experience some of her out of boundsness in April. So just know that with Mercury, you're not going to find traditional solutions inside of your normal sphere. Step outside of that information, step outside of that comfort zone, and that's where you may find it. And this could also be um, that you are, if you are a job seeker, this will help you because the job that you need next is actually just outside of your bounds. And maybe what that looks like is, you know, you're qualified to be the certified whatever level one and two. And the position that you're asking for is a certified level one, two, and three, but you don't apply for it because you say, oh, I don't have three. But that was just an optional piece of their write-up or something like that. So ask questions, communicate. If you are looking for a job, just make sure it's outside of your normal bounds, okay? All right, Aquas, I think it's going to be a beautiful month for you. I really feel like there's a fair amount going. I hope you jump into some pleasure. 
you jump into some joy. I hope you will joyfully and pleasurefully come and join us for the collaborations that are happening on this channel. We've had Nadia Shaw, Sasha Benedetti has been over here as well. Terrence Gardino, Gemini Brett, Patrick Arundel, they are all on the way coming this next month and many more are lining up to not only come talk about topics, but also to teach some actual technique in the astrology practices as well. So looking forward to seeing you in those collaborations. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye Aquarius.